I was young, I learned it was a man's world. But it's not. It's just the world. I'm going to take you on a journey, my journey, out of the shadows and into the light. But before we do that, what I'd like to do is have all of us take a breath together. And as you exhale, feel yourself being held by the earth. Now this journey actually begins in the light. When I was young, I was a spitfire. I was a force of nature. I was wild and even a little untamed. And I knew it. I was connected to the earth. I was connected to life. I was connected to this vastness of the heart. And it felt right. The feeling inside of me felt right. I loved to play really hard. I would get really sweaty on my upper lip really physical little girl. And I love to paint just as hard. In fact, I love to watch the paint just spread across the paper. I didn't even care what the painting looked like. I just loved yellow paint. That was it for me, yellow paint. And I remember this, this vivacious quality that I had, this connection. I always wanted to share that with people. I wanted everybody to know how I felt. And I remember one day wanting my dad to understand. And he looked down at me, and he said, but honey, that's not logical. Now, my dad was a math and logic major, so that made sense. But from this little girl's perspective, suddenly I was like, oh my gosh, there's this wall up. I don't know how to communicate with him. I don't know how to translate all of this into a tiny thing. It felt like logic just felt hard and tight. And I found myself shutting down. I got tongue-tied. And I found myself not trusting my feelings. I found myself starting to try to figure out what it meant to be logical. And with that, I entered into the shadows, the shadows of the structure of patriarchy. I became a good daughter of logic and reason. Now, I use the word patriarchy purposefully here. It's not men. I want to make that clear. It's institutions, beliefs, systems that are based on the idea that men have power over the world. And ultimately, or should in the world. In this hierarchy, women, children, and the earth are all underneath. And in this hierarchy, you begin to feel a little bit grayed out. That yellow isn't so vibrant anymore. Power in the patriarchy or in this structure is power over, power to dominate. And we see the effects of that in the world today. But what's most important, I found, is that women and children are objectified, the earth is objectified, and we are othered. We can't belong in the system in the full way. That's not how it's set up. And we have this dis-ease within ourselves of belonging. That ease of belonging I had as a child, I didn't feel. But the funny thing is, even though we pretend to be what we're not in order to fit in and belong, we can't ever really be what we're not. It's an illusion. It's an illusion that we're trying to fool ourselves by hiding all of this stuff away, and that's what I was doing. And more than that, the whole system is really an illusion because it's not fundamental reality. One day I was walking in the Berkeley Hills, beautiful, beautiful landscape, and I decided to sit down on this bench. And I took a moment to just take a breath, look at the hills, look at the trees, the sky. For reason in that moment, it hit me. It's a blank canvas. 
There's actually nothing written on this world. Everything that we follow are beliefs that people have made up. Now, who says it should be this way? Who says this is reality? Now, I'm not saying that there aren't very real everyday effects from the system. People all over the world are, being, are suffering from domination and control. But if we step back far enough, we begin to see that the world is actually a blank canvas. Now, how do we find the authority to actually step into this realization that it can be different? Well, we touch the ground. Many before us have actually seen that this is not fundamental reality. The Buddha, when he was sitting under the Bodhi tree and he'd reached enlightenment, he was sitting and Mara, who was the embodiment of ignorance and illusion, came before him. Buddha, you must leave. I am in charge of the earth. Ignorance and illusion. You must leave. And what did Buddha do? He touched the ground. He touched the ground because he was asking the earth to be his witness, that he belonged here. And the earth quaked in response. We belong here. Just like I knew as a child, I belong here. It's not a man's world. It's not a woman's world. It's the world. Now, there's many ways to touch the ground. This is an image of me walking up Haleakala, the volcano on the side of uh, on Maui. And I was walking by myself up to this 400-foot waterfall. And it had rained really hard the night before. And I decided to go barefoot because I kept slipping around on my feet. And so touching the ground was a way for me to connect to the earth, for me to find my footing for me to make it all the way up this volcano by myself safe. Other ways we touch the ground sometimes are suffering. Now, we've all had suffering. 17 years ago, my husband died at 4 in the morning, suddenly before my eyes. And I thought I knew the ground. But in that moment, everything changed. Everything changed. I had no ground. Eleven years ago, my grandson was born with a heart defect, open heart surgery when he was a day old, brain surgery at 10 days old, 20 surgeries his first year of life. No ground again. But as I sat with the reality of what was happening, I found the ground. I found that the earth was holding me. Now, other ways we can find the ground are through creative endeavors. This is something called mess painting. It's this great um, exercise to try to burn out the gunk that gets in the way of creativity. And for six, six weeks, six days a week, you paint 20 paintings a day. You have two minutes to cover each sheet of the Wall Street Journal. <laughs> A little subliminal thing there. Eight colors. And I found myself along about week five painting like crazy. And suddenly I dropped the paintbrush and I started painting my fingernails and my hands and my elbows and even my breasts. Every part of my body wanted to get into the painting. And I was surprised by it, but I stood back, and I felt so joyous. Every cell in my body was alive. And I remembered that feeling from childhood, right? The yellow paint, just watching the paint flow. I was alive again. I was touching ground. 
And in this moment, I felt whole body joy. This is the actual painting that I was painting in that moment. Whole body joy. And what I know about that is that is our creativity, that's our vitality, it is our sensuality, and it is our sexuality. It is our life force as women. And it's particular to women because we bring life into being through our bodies. So whether or not we birth children, we have a creative aspect that is sacred. There's a sacred essence to this vital life force that flows through our bodies. Now one way to look at this through the structure is if we talk about sexuality, when a woman has sex for the first time, so she's a virgin, the colloquial term is that she's been deflowered. Now what does that do, whether or not the word is used, what does that do to our psyches to think that our blossom is taken, that we can't ever bloom fully? Now, let's look at it a different way. Pablo Neruda, I want to do with you what spring does with cherry trees. Let me say that again and feel it in your body. I want to do with you what spring does with cherry trees. How would it be to know that you are being loved in that way? For a moment, feel yourself as a cherry tree. Feel the sun on your face. Feel the rain soaking into your skin. Feel the earth holding your roots. And feel this force, this green force, moving up through your roots, into your branches, causing you to leaf and bud and bloom, and maybe even cherry. When we touch the ground, when we know we belong here, we absolutely know life is moving through us, asking us to blossom, asking us to bloom, and if it's right for us, to fruit. But nobody's taking anything. We are being expressed and filled. And we are offering our gifts, cherries or whatever. A tree that is in full bloom, magnificent. And that is what is possible for each of us. Now, it's not like logic and reason are bad things, right? I was a COBOL programmer. Three semesters of calculus, right? I worked for a bank for 17 years. And I love programming, but it wasn't the whole picture. The whole picture woke up again when I was painting. So this force, as I mentioned, it's sexuality, creativity, vitality, everything that moves through us is what I call the erotic. Now, the erotic comes through the god Eros, love. But Eros was always this, also the source of the world, the, the world coming into being. Now, Audre Lorde speaks about the erotic as the deepest life force and a force that will move us towards pos real positive change. And to me, that is the key here, is that what needs to wake up in us in, as women is the very thing that is trying to move up through our trunks and branches out into the world. We are being filled with this force all the time. In my case, I learned to keep it down. And the question for all of you is just to see, do you feel that force inside your bodies? It is love, it is life. And when it becomes alive in us, we begin to know that we are part of this existence. We are not othered. We belong here. We stand with both feet, muddy or not, on this planet, knowing that what we have to offer is a vital key part of life. It's not an addition or an add-on. I've discovered in my life that when we fall out of the very fabric that we think is holding us, 
that we thought was holding us, we actually fall into the real fabric that has always held us. So for a moment right now, just notice, is this earth still holding you? Has she ever not held you? She's always here. And part of us waking up this erotic force is to join with her, is to know the joy again that it is to be in a woman's body. The full joy, the full expression. However that shows up for each of you. And for the men in our lives, the men that I've known in my life, they just want me to be happy, ultimately. So I think joy serves a purpose, a very important purpose, because it encapsulates this creativity, this sexuality, the vitality, this life force. And when we connect to our joy into the earth, the earth is replenished. And the earth needs that right now. We all need it right now. Men, women, children, all beings. So if anything, what I'd love you to take away is to know that you are your own cherry tree and that there is a force that wants to love you all the time that way. And will you allow it in? I hope so. Thank you.